back over everything you have to say Good morning, everyone. We're in a break until um, the jurors come in at 10 o'clock. We just went over briefly uh, instructions uh, that we're going to bring to the jurors here at 10 o'clock. And then, uh, the, I guess, Steve Myrie, but the government's going to bring up uh, their opening or their closing arguments to the jurors. And they're expected to be done and rest at noon. And then the, the defense is going to start with uh, their closing arguments right after lunch. Uh, Andrea's got some new information on some of the juror questions that were not uh, announced publicly in court, and uh, some other things she's going to go over from yesterday. Okay, so yesterday um, my live stream stopped. The phone got too hot. It was messing with me. The phone's dying, but um, we're going to continue on. Um, Scott Dressel was able to testify in front of the jury. At one point, uh, Leventhal was bringing in information about Oregon and the Sugar Pine Mine, and it was an objection. He asked for a sidebar, and the judge told him no. This is the second time that I have seen Leventhal ask for a sidebar where he was told no. Um, uh, they focus a lot that his father was a county sheriff for over 16 years, and that there no, were no arrests in Montana. <laughs> and there was another objection to that. It was. Um, Irrelevant and uh, or to relevant, and that was overruled. So uh, or sustained. So the government comes back at Scott Dressler and they start reading his Longbow interview. And um, Leventhal was able to bring Longbow and what that was back in because they tried to use his testimony from Longbow against him in the courtroom. And what they're doing here is they ask, I mean, brutally ask the same question over and over, trying to get him to answer in a way that they would like. In fact, they were asking him questions and then objecting and striking his answer to those questions. Have you ever seen that before when the prosecution asks a question and then they strike his answer? They object to their own question and strike the answer. So, um, in redirect, they brought the long go up again about how they asked him to be uh, to make it exciting. So then we go to the jury questions. Like I said, there was 10 jury questions. Most of them were about, did you know um, at the time you were providing the interview that it was the FBI? Another one, undercover agents. Um, one of the questions was strange. When, were you coming to Bunkerville to get credit with certain militias and why did you choose one militia over a different militia? Um, another question, I know 3% doing community service, but is there also uh, tactical training? And Scott's answer was beautiful. He said, yes, there's tactical training. But the safety with firearms is very important. <laughs> and then there was a question about Idaho 3% being around before, and it was no. There was five questions that were not asked, and I was able to talk to Eric last night, and he said many of the questions were actually, why did you bring a weapon to a protest? Now, many of these um, questions were the same, just like many of the questions were about the FBI. So the, basically, the jury was asking, why bring a weapon to a protest? Now, Eric was saying that he was frustrated because he was thinking that um, they should already know the answer to this. And I told him, you know, just because they already know the answer doesn't mean they don't want to hear it from you yourself. Now, um, DJ, we've also had, you know, we've been in court maybe, what, five minutes this morning? Yeah. Five minutes this morning, and somebody's already been kicked out. So I am going to let him come over <laughs> And explain that we are already seeing once again that they are they are picking and choosing their laws and rules up in the corner. Hey, good morning, guys. So we walk in, go through the two metal detectors. Nobody says a word about my shirt. Um, I get pulled out. He taps me on the shoulder. And says, "Hey, can you turn your shirt inside out?" I said, "Okay, well, that's fine. I can do that." So I went outside, I turned my shirt inside out, went back in the courtroom, sat down, listened to the judge say her spiel, uh, talk about the jury instruction, talk about uh, the, the schedule for the day, and we all leave the courtroom, and we're standing out there talking, and Marshall comes up and taps me on the shoulder and says, sir, you're not allowed in the courtroom. And I'm like, yes, you're right. Well, we're just following orders. That's the order we've been given. And I'm like, come on, guys, I drove 18 hours to be here. I'm a member of the public. This is a public trial. Why can I not see this trial? Well, we don't have an answer for it. And I'm like, guys, listen. 
All I'm asking for is an answer. Somebody please give me an answer as to why. You know, just because is not an answer. So they sent me to the second the second uh, level to talk to the supervisors, and I was met at the door before I even got out of the elevator uh, by their supervisor. And I said, man, here's the deal. I drove 18 hours. I'm here to watch this trial. Why can't I watch this trial? And he said, the U.S. Marshals don't have to give you an answer. I go, brother, that is not okay. This is That's not acceptable. Are you telling me that that's an acceptable answer? That I'm a member of the public and I'm not allowed an answer? And we bantered back and forth and he said, I understand your frustration. I said, I don't think you do. So he grabs his phone. He says he calls his supervisor and his supervisor says very clearly, he asked him, why can't Mr. Soper here be in trial? He said, by order of the U.S. Marshal. That's my answer. I can't be in the trial by order of the U.S. Marshal. No reason. I did nothing. I didn't wave at anybody. I didn't cough. I didn't, I, I barely blinked. I was worried about, you know, what these guys are thinking. And, and that's just, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And as, as I walked out, I told the guy, I said, this is why the public doesn't trust you. He doesn't trust what's happening in this courtroom. Because you're not giving us reasons. You're not acting justly. You're not acting, you know, as a human being. So that's, that's where we're at. Now, I was so set I'm out. And I was sitting, I was sitting almost right next to you yeah. on the same bench. We sat on the very back row. We was hardly visible to anybody. Right. And I was sitting there, and nobody. We didn't even. We didn't make a sound. We didn't communicate with yeah. each other. Didn't make a sound at all. What are you gonna do? Just, just more, uh, more of what goes on in this court. So, it's all good. There's still many people in there to talk about and listen to what's going on. So uh, you guys do a great job giving that. Thing, so. Well, I'll just listen to you guys, like <laughs> always. We appreciate you coming all this way to be turned down from coming into the courtroom, though. And, and that's exactly what we've been dealing with this entire trial, for sure. No. Well, you. even though that you didn't make it into the courtroom and everything, your work really was appreciated, and it got a lot of people out here. Made you know, a thank you. Like made a big difference. Night, words are only words. It's the actions when people put it to action is what matters. No, thanks for coming. That's just it. Yeah. Long ways. It is. It's yeah. all good. And I, man, I'm thanks. so thankful for everybody that showed up. We have people from everywhere. We had people from everywhere. We yeah. still have over 30 people in the courtroom this yeah. morning. Easily. So yeah. we have both sides. We have people on both sides of the aisle. Uh, I know there's 30 just on our side, and then there was another probably 10 or 12 on the other side. Yep. So we we've still got a lot of people in the courtroom, which is great for the support of these guys. And uh, so we thank everyone for coming from so far. And everywhere around so there's still a lot of people out here besides who's in the courtroom yep. absolutely and then even we had the solidarity uh, protests all over you know there were people that it, they went just alone to their courthouse and did that and and that takes even more strength than going in a group it, I mean it takes strength to go in a group but it takes so much more strength to go alone and to all of those people out there um, I want you to know I truly appreciate it. I saw the pictures and the videos and I'm going to keep looking because kind of on finding stuff on my phone is a little more difficult. But to each and every one of you that went with us, that said prayers, that uh, went to their own courthouse, um, I can't thank you all enough. I've seen tea bags, I think in Oregon. Uh, at a federal courthouse in Montana, at a federal courthouse somewhere over in Michigan. These are some of the pictures that I've got myself. St. Louis, Indiana. St. Louis, that's right. Indiana. And uh, so Indiana. There was people at other courthouses around this nation that did the same thing yesterday. So thank you for doing that. Again, um, we will most likely the government's going to rest at noon um, with their closing arguments. The defense will get their closing arguments in early afternoon, and we expect the jurors to get this case. Um, as early as this afternoon. The judge is already talking about deliberations for the, ju for the jurors, whether we'll make it to Thursday or Friday, and what our plans are if the jurors are going to stay until fri all through Friday if they don't come up with an answer. So we've got a lot to update you with this afternoon. Uh, after these closing arguments are over with, uh, we'll give you uh, what we hear in the courtroom. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you a little bit later here. That's a wrap.